Welcome everyone to the BS Review. We are here with a review for a film that we have been very excited for, very much anticipating, and that is How to Train Your Dragon 3. We were, you know, we really like the first two films in this franchise, especially number two is a phenomenal film. I give it like an A+. Plus. And so we are very hyped for this one going in, and it was, it was pretty good. So to give you guys a brief synopsis, which will have a few spoilers from the first two films, we are picking up in this film with Hiccup and Toothless, and of course their band of friends and their dragons, and they are continuing to protect Burke and to uh, foster their dragons and to help protect dragons and house them, and they are after this thing called the Hidden World, which is supposedly the birthplace of dragons and their home. And so they're looking for this, and along the way, uh, they find another Night Fury, or Light Fury, as they call it, as a companion to Toothless. So I won't spoil anything about the plot. We will give our opinions on everything that happened. Ultimately, I think the plot is probably the weakest part of this movie. It's good. It It is pretty good, but I think... It doesn't fully commit in any one direction, which I think is its biggest weakness, especially as a trilogy finisher. I think it really wanted to give everyone that completion feeling of this franchise. But in doing so, I felt like they gave up on a little bit of character development they could have had or, you know, a more interesting villain or something of that nature. I think it's very clear that the plot of this movie is very geared towards kids, which is fair. This is a kids franchise, and I felt like the first movie was very much geared towards kids. I felt like the second movie was a bit more geared towards adult. It had a lot of heavier themes and things that happened, and then this one kind of reverted a little bit back more to the tone of the first one, and it actually honestly has a bit more of the tone of the TV show that's on Netflix, which I have watched a good chunk of, not all of it, but a good chunk. It reflects that a bit more, and as an adult viewer watching it, being well aware that it's not necessarily for, made for me, uh, I was just a little disappointed in the blandness, which I struggle to say because it's not a bland movie, but I think in heavy comparison to the second film, it is. Yeah, I definitely feel like the themes of the first two films focus so much on, like, love, loss, and especially trying to become your own person. And I felt like this film didn't follow through on all of those themes in a consistent way with earlier ones. I felt like you didn't really feel Hiccup's struggle to become his own person in this one as much as him deal with a difficult set of circumstances. Whereas I felt like in the previous films, his tough circumstances were a tool for him to grow and change. So with that, let's segue a bit more into the characters and discussing them in a spoiler-free way. Um, I mean, I think you've given a good synopsis of Hiccup mm -hmm. <laughs> in this movie. I think one of my biggest struggles with this movie was Astrid. Uh, hmm, hmm. Astrid in this movie was a plot device and a supporting character only. And I just feel like that was not the direction they were making her in the previous two films, and I felt like, ah, uh, it's hard to discuss this without being spoilery. Um, <laughs> I just really did not like what they did with her character. It, it Honestly, it's not even what they did with their character. Like, the end result I don't have a problem with. It's the way they pushed people to get to that end result is the problem I have with, without going into spoilers. If you've seen it, you may know what I'm talking about. I definitely felt like they made Astrid's role very one-dimensional in this film as the fixer in this, which ends up just being not a good way to write a character when their only responsibility in terms of the plot is to fix the main character when they have struggles, which I think is how they use Astrid more um, in this film, which is kind of sad to see because I felt like she's pretty fleshed out. And all the characters are pretty fleshed out in these movies, especially the second one. I felt like you got a good, like, three-dimensional view of a lot of these characters. Even some of the more jokier characters who are there just for the one-liners, you get a little bit more depth of. And I almost felt like this film took a step backwards in that with side characters. Everyone felt much more, like, one-dimensional in this film. Um, 
it felt like they removed a lot of the nuances about how their characters worked and said, this is the funny guy, so he will only appear in the film when he's here to make a funny joke. And that's the... And it'll be the same joke the entire film. Yes. And every single person has their own joke, and that's the only time they appear on screen is to follow up on that joke line and which is a big reason why i felt like it was more geared towards kids because that's a very big theme in kid focused media definitely and so it ultimately felt like none of the characters went necessarily as far as i wanted them to in fact some of them felt like they took a step backwards which is never good in a third trilogy when we've been with these characters for so long we want to see them to continue to develop and to change in positive ways not to have stuff like almost like taken off their plate. I think as a trilogy conclusion, I just think the best way I can describe this is it was fine. It, it, it was fine. Like there's nothing wrong with it as a movie. But I think that if you're, if you're ramping up like this in your series, the third one was like this. It was back down to like the, the level of the first one. Whereas I expected it to continue going up personally, uh, just in terms of stakes and character development, etc. So as a trilogy finisher, I honestly find it very weak for the direction that it was being set up in. I agree. I think number two is the strongest film in this trilogy, and which is rare because normally very. the second one's like the weakest film in the trilogy. And this film definitely feels like it pivots from some of the ideas, the themes, and like the the production style of the original two films. It seems like it shifts. That being said, very beautiful film. It looks oh, yeah. real good. But as a finishing of a trilogy, it ends up just being fine and not necessarily elevating this trilogy to like the next level with an excellent finisher. But that is what we thought about this film. Overall, it was pretty good. But just the fact that it could have been so much better and the second film did so much for us, and we both enjoyed it so much that this didn't quite live up to that same standard. But enough on our thoughts. Please let us know your thoughts down in the comments. I think the overall consensus is people really enjoyed this, so we might have a slight <laughs> bit of an unpopular opinion on this one. But give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed hearing our thoughts, even if you don't necessarily agree with them. Please subscribe if you want to see more of our videos. We have a lot of fun series coming to you guys soon, and of course, more movie reviews. And we will see you guys in our next video. Bye!